Everybody remembers the Vancouver Grizzlies and their notoriously short and sad run in the NBA, but there are a lot of interesting factors that played into it that a lot of people may not know. When the NBA expanded to Canada with two teams in 1995, the Toronto Raptors went almost directly to the top of the attendance market and Vancouver fell to the bottom. It's weird how one Canadian team was always wildly successful and the other didn't bring in enough money to stay afloat. But to properly understand why it didn't work, we have to go back in time and see where Vancouver and Toronto were at in 1995. These cities were nowhere near what they are today and have done a huge amount of developing in the last 20 years. The economy has skyrocketed, especially in Vancouver. In 2017, Vancouver was ranked the third most expensive city to live in in the world, meaning there is good real estate, a lot of people, lots of money in business, and major development there in that economy. The perfect setting for a basketball team. But in 95, Vancouver was still developing. The Grizzlies were playing at the General Motors place, which is now called the Rogers Arena. Back when the Grizzlies played there, it wasn't a long drive away from the arena before everything started to look rural and you'd pretty much be in the middle of nowhere. So firstly, Vancouver wasn't ready to support an NBA franchise because the Vancouver economy couldn't support it. The Vancouver Grizzlies were taking in Canadian money, which was 0.70 to the US dollar at the time. So they were paying their employees in American money, which means they were constantly losing money. So what was different about Toronto? Toronto was also not the city it is today, but the Raptors struck gold in 1998. Vince Carter superstar and propelled Toronto to the top of the ticket sale market and put them on the map as a basketball team. So having a franchise player that early was a blessing to a young expansion team. But what happened in Vancouver was basically the alternate timeline. The next season, in 1999, Vancouver had the second overall pick. But they didn't draft their franchise player. Well, they drafted a franchise player. But unlike Carter, Steve Francis was not willing to play in Canada at all. And this situation was a small-scale example of another one of Vancouver's problems. Steve Francis simply did not want to play there. If you haven't seen his draft night video, you have to. He was just drafted to the NBA, but he looked like he was getting called down to the principal's office. But did he have a reason? As Toronto started to build around their franchise player, Vancouver still had not found one and never built a proper team to compete. Had Steve Francis wanted to become Steve Franchise in Vancouver, they might actually still have a team today. Being from Maryland, I can understand why Vancouver seemed like the other side of the world for him. And I can see how it would feel that way for other players too. Steve said, it took us nine hours to get to Vancouver. I'm like, man, how is my family going to come see me? How am I going to go see my family? When a writer in Vancouver asked him what he knows about the city, he replied, it rains a lot, the government takes your money, it's a long way away. Which is pretty much true, so with players coming from the states, especially states with really nice weather, I could completely understand not wanting to play in a city like Vancouver. I would even say that I can completely understand a player not wanting to play in Toronto too. Sure, Toronto has taken leaps and bounds since the 90s, but it's still far away from a lot of US cities. The taxes are different than in the States, and probably most daunting of all, it's cold. Super cold. Toronto is actually colder than Vancouver in the winter, because Vancouver gets more mild and rainy weather like what C. Francis was referencing. So when Toronto hosted the All-Star Weekend in 2016, players were complaining about the cold here, saying that they couldn't go outside. Paul George even said that it was terrible, too cold, and for the record, Toronto was undergoing a freezing cold alert during that weekend. But my point is, is that Paul George is from LA, and what weather do you think he would choose? Obviously, California. I'm from Toronto and I would choose the weather in California. So given the choice, a lot of the players from down there wouldn't want to live in a place where it gets this cold. And Toronto has never been a free agent destination, so that means that we've built ourselves through the draft and through trades. To this day, our biggest free agent signing is Hito Turkoglu. So if this is the case in Toronto, it would definitely be the case in Vancouver. And teams that are not free agent destinations usually have to take longer to develop into respectable teams. Former Raptor Tracy McGrady added, Oh man, I lived right there on Queens Key. I used to send my girl at the time, now she's my wife. I used to send her down to the supermarket to go shopping. I'd look out the window and see her walking in the cold weather, freezing her butt off. I was like, this is not my type of weather here, McGrady said laughing. At the time, I'm trying to make a decision whether to stay in freezing Toronto or go home to Orlando. I just thought it was a no-brainer. As I said, if I'd been a little older and a little wiser, maybe things would have been different. It's definitely something I always sit back and reminisce about, thinking about Toronto and what we could have been. He also stated that they didn't have all those condos up when I was there, which is true. Toronto didn't have the big downtown core that it does today. So relating that back to Vancouver, it's very similar. They didn't have the city as developed as it is now. Now, the downtown core surrounding the Rogers Arena has some of the most expensive real estate in the world. The financial and industrial industries there have been booming. And this means that the team wouldn't have a lack of investors and sponsors like it did in the 90s. If the team was there today, it would receive a lot of support from businesses willing to invest in them. Thus, Vancouver is currently on the NBA shortlist of cities to get an expansion team. Which if you would have told that to someone post Vancouver Grizzlies, they would have laughed at you. 
but now it's actually being considered. It's crazy, but because the Vancouver has developed, it's being seen as an actual possibility. The list of expansion teams right now is as follows. Seattle, Mexico City, Louisville, Las Vegas, and Vancouver. Yeah, they're at the end of the list, but even being considered is huge and shows how great the city of Vancouver is today. I definitely think that moving to Memphis was the smart business move for the Grizzlies, but I'm proud that the NBA wants another team in Canada, especially the fact that they would like to reconcile what happened in the past and give Vancouver another chance. The Raptors have shown that a team in Canada can not only be successful, but very successful. Even after the tragic end to the Vince Carter era, Toronto has managed to stay among the top of the league in attendance, and last year they were 12th in revenue. 12th in revenue at 250 million, proof that even with a different exchange rate, a Canadian team can still rank among the top half of the league. Another reason the NBA is interested is because of Vancouver being a gateway to China and other Asian countries. It being another international team, as well as being closer to Asia, the NBA hopes to continue to build internationally and Vancouver could be a part of that as a door to connect to other countries. In 2009, David Stern said that, I wish we didn't have the Vancouver experience. Maybe we shouldn't have done it there. Maybe we should have only expanded to Toronto but that was a great disappointment to me. And it was a great disappointment for a lot of people. And I would say that I agree. They shouldn't have expanded to Vancouver in 1995. But expanding to Vancouver now, or sometime in the near future, would be a great idea. Now the city would be ready to support it economically. The team wouldn't be restricted money-wise like they were in the 90s. Now it would be a good idea financially, and it would offer a new exciting dynamic to the NBA. The team is already said to have an interested buyer who owns the Vancouver Canucks and the Rogers Arena itself. Also. There are reports of the NBA expansion consisting of two new teams in the Western Conference, meaning a current Western Conference team would be moved to the Eastern Conference. And Vancouver falls into the Western Conference, so this would work out if actually considered. To end this video, I've compiled some photos of old Vancouver Grizzlies players and added where they are today. Thanks for watching, everybody.